<laughs> Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the second to last, the penultimate webinar in our spring webinar series. I'm so excited to be here with you guys, whether you are tuning in live right now or if you're watching recording, watching this recording later on. We're happy to give you these different presentations and show you different snippets of life at Christendom. Um, I really want to show you guys a little bit about especially the day in the life of a student, I think this was the biggest thing for me coming from high school that I didn't get a, a sense of. I didn't understand what was going on. So what we're going to try to do with this is we're going to try to give you um, the, the different senses of, you know, the day, the night, and the weekend as far as different places. And we're going to follow two students. We're going to follow John Paul Vanderwoody, who you saw at the beginning. He's a senior. He's our, actually, he's our head RA this year. He's also our uh, head counselor at the Best Week Ever Summer Program. Um, and he's a fantastic guy. He plays soccer, basketball, as I mentioned, uh, player of the year. Um, where he's a great singer. He serves at the altar. He works in the gym. All around great guy. Um, honestly, probably one of the most... Um, uh, one of the best guys uh, in the class. I mean, all the guys at the Christmas class are good, but he's, he's one of our best. So we're going to be following him around and we're going to be following around Monica Laframboise. So Monica Laframboise, you might know, is the younger sister of our admissions counselor, Catherine Laframboise. Um, so for her this semester, she's actually in Rome. So we're going to be kind of going through her typical schedule from last semester. Um, so you'll, you, I don't know if I put any photos of her in Rome from, from this semester, but um, so she's living a completely different schedule and I'm happy to answer any questions about the Rome program. There's also a, a webinar on our YouTube page that has a, a deeper insights on, as to what goes on in our Rome program that I gave, uh, I think last fall, you can find the recording. Other than that, um, still to give you a sense of both sides of what it is to be a student here. And while these are both upperclassmen, I think their experiences are still pretty indicative of the whole um, experience of Christendom. That as as things go on, it's 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 what are it's our students that make Christendom special. The people who want to live out um, countercultural lives by living out the gospel. And so, hopefully, you can get a sense of that by following these two students around, and we can give you a sense of how it's a lot different than high school. High school, you have a lot of your time allotted out for you and in college, a lot of it's free time and you have to really take responsibility for your own time. So hopefully you can see this as we go on. Um, we'll, we'll show you guys a little bit more as time goes on. Um, if you, again, at any point during this, if you have any questions or anything like that, please put them in the chat below. Um, I'll answer them at the end. Um, and But if it's helpful, I think in my mind, at least, if you think of the question immediately, just put it there in the chat. That way it's, it's saved and I can come back and find it later. And then if, there, if you need a clarification, you can always type. One. All right. With that, we'll continue on to the daytime. So this is the, again, the main space of where we are at Christendom uh, when it comes to the workday. And a lot of that, the work that students do is academics. And so during your time at Christendom, you're going to have a typical, uh, a typical class that is going to be 18 credit hours. So what does that mean? That means that for 18 hours of the week, you are in class. That means that you, whether you, it's, it's, there's Tuesday, Thursday classes, that's, you know, total filling for about um, an hour and a half each class period, totaling out to three hours each class there, or if it's the three 50 minute periods, three times a week of the Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, your total amount in the classroom is going to be about 18 credit hours or 18 hours, I should say. And that means that, you know, in a typical 40 hour work week, that leaves you with another 22 hours of free time. And to be honest, it's it's even more than that for <laughs> the 40 hours a week, but there's going to be a lot of homework and things like that. But I think a lot of people wonder like, well, what is the actual student experience like if you're used to spending eight hours a day in a classroom or if you're homeschooled, um, not being in a classroom at all? <laughs> what is what is the what is the balance that we're expecting you to have? So you're expected to show up to lectures. These aren't lectures that you can just pop in and pop out of. Typically, students uh, are allowed think about three apps, it depends on the professor, um, but it'll all be very clear in each professor's syllabus at the beginning of the semester, what um, what is admissible for missing things and things like that. You're, you, there's also, you know, sick notice, and like that, obviously, but, you know, you're expected to take responsibility for showing up to class, and it's not just that you can, you know, <laughs> miss all of your classes and then show up at the end of the, um, at the end of the semester and cram, 
Um, we really want you to have a, a, a good experience of the classes by attending classes throughout. So that's why we have these different things. So typically night classes are, again, three hour periods, uh, one night a week. Most often freshmen won't have classes. There may be a Spanish class or things like that. For the most part, freshmen are scheduled classes during the day. Night classes come with uh, students who are working with teachers who are working professionals. So for instance, um, Raph Madden, he is one of our uh, con constitutional law professors. He works in the Justice Department during the day and is kind enough to come and give a lecture in the evening once a week. And so his classes are three hour periods because he only can come out from DC once a week. So there's different things like that, but I'm happy to answer more questions about that. For those of you who are wondering now, I know a lot of you have already deposited and are planning on coming here this fall. We can't wait to have you. I see a lot of great familiar names out there. Um, for those of you who are wondering, uh, registration for classes will begin kind of mid-summer. Um, it'll, it'll probably be, I, it's my guess is probably gonna be mid-July, um, but you'll start receiving these, notific these email notifications um, called Christendom Beginnings. And this is a, a, a really key thing. I know that you guys who are watching these webinars are the people who are most on top of the Christendom experience. So I, I don't think it'll be you, but what you will what will happen is that in, in May, after we pass our deposit deadline, you will get a notice saying um, that you have a cr new Christendom email. And this is how you access your Christendom email. And then our student life office will start sending pertinent information to your college experience to that Christendom email. One of the most important of these is the Christian Beginnings kind of newsletter that comes from Student Life. And that includes things on how to fill out uh, everything from roommate questionnaires to how to register for classes, all of that. You can find out all about that in the Christian Beginning emails, which is accessed through your Christian email. So be aware of those things coming down the pipe. We'll say it before, I'll say it many, many times between now and May 2nd and beyond that. But just so you're aware, that's the big thing is accessing your Christian email, and that's where all the information is going to come through. So classes are a big part of the day-to-date -day experience. But also, I think one thing that is very special about Christendom and what makes Christendom Christendom is that we don't actually schedule any class time whenever Mass is offered. So whether it's we have set Mass offered at 7.30 in the morning, and we don't have any classes between 11.15 or 1 o'clock every day so that all of you can go to Mass. And I so, 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 so encourage you to go to daily Mass this time. We want it to be the easiest way time possible for you to get to Mass. So for instance, I know Monica is a big early riser. She'll go to the 7.30 a.m. Mass. I know John Paul, he's, uh, he's a senior now. He's typically serves at the 1130 mass. Um, so you can do either one there. There's different offerings and um, you can, they're, they're all Novus Ordo masses, but there's kind of different offerings throughout the week. So you can kind of see um, different things there, but that you have uh, daily mass available there. If you're interested in attending the extraordinary form, um, which I know Monica tends to go to sometimes uh, there's, it's available at 7 AM uh, throughout the week. Um, so Monday through Saturday um, at um, our Adoration Chapel at St. John's. So it's about probably a 10 minute drive away, um, but there's a lot of students that go there every day. So it's not difficult to find people that you're uh, able to get in touch with there. Um, as far as meal times, again, the, we have specific broken up meal times. So you're not required to check in and go to every meal, but those are the times that food is gonna be available. So that's time most people are going through and getting their food. Uh, John Paul, has basketball season right now. And so they have practice when we'll talk about this, they have practice in the afternoons, they have practice at four o'clock. And so he'll get uh, his practice and then he'll go till about probably 545. Um, and then he'll come to dinner a bit later. So you don't have to show up right at that immediate time, but there's different things like that. Um, lastly, if you have any dietary re restrictions or questions, especially as we kind of move into our, um, move into the, the summer and preparing for the fall, please reach out to Kaylin Damas, who's our Director of Student Support Services and Academic Success Coach. Uh, I, you would have seen that I had an uh, interview with her about academic success uh, a couple weeks ago. It would be on our on our, um, on our our playlist, but you can, you can hear from her. You can communicate with her and find out anything you need. We, again, we try to be uh, as personalized as possible with all of this. And so hopefully you can get a, uh, your, your questions answered about that there. If you have any immediate questions, I'm happy to answer them again, but she's going to be the one that helps coordinate what you know what food is needed what uh accommodations are needed for academics and all those different things so we have that all through her jobs so as i mentioned before at the beginning john paul vanderwoody works 
in uh, the gym. He He's a gym attendant, so he helps make sure that the gym stays clean, all the weights are re-racked and things like that. Monica Laframboise, she uh, works in our admissions office. She's a student night caller uh, during the year. So she's uh, calling people like you. You've probably received a call for in the evening from time to time. And yeah, so both of them, like for instance, Monica works nine hours a week. Um, and so she works in the evenings. So from, uh, she works on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, or she worked Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, um, last year. And it was, it was three hours a night. And so she was able to get in nine hours a week. And on average students make about a thousand dollars a semester. John Paul's schedule was about during the day. And so the biggest thing is that at the beginning of each semester, students coordinate with their, um, employers about what time works for them what what time works for them when it comes to scheduling around classes and things like that so we really want i mean when we have students working here the number one reason why they're here is to take classes we know we're not we know they're not here to work at the gym we know they're not here to go and work in admissions all the time so we want them to <laughs> do the best they can in classes so we're very flexible with that but again they're paid hourly again it's a fantastic opportunity to yes to make some extra money and help pay for school and things like that and certainly how i did it but um, it's also a great, a great experience to actually have something for your resume. I worked as a student caller back when I was a student, and now I'm working in the admissions office. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of different things that help students uh, really gain that real life work experience in those jobs and opportunities. So they happen all during the day and in the evening, different opportunities like that. As we come to the end of the day, end of the day as I mentioned, John Paul Vanderwitty has athletic practice Monday through Thursday, um, 4, 10 to 5, 30 uh, during the season. So he's in the fall, he had soccer and in the winter and in the spring, he's had basketball. Now that's coming to an end. So that kind of opens up. Um, I know that both John Paul and Monica have cars, so it doesn't really apply to them, but we also offer van runs. If you want to get around town, specifically to the River Common space, if you need to go to Walmart, you need to go to Urgent Care, you need to to see the space, we offer van runs. You could, you're also welcome to get friends to drive you or things like that, but we don't want any student to be um, isolated if they need to get something and they don't have anybody to help them. So we offer those van runs. They leave from St. Lawrence Commons. And then again, there's so much free time. I think it's, I, I want to stress that to you is that you need to think about how you're going to be spending your free time as you come in as a student. You think about those last things. What do you want? What do you want your student experience to be? Um, because the time is going to be spent either way and you can either let it drain through your fingers and it's important to schedule time to rest and it's important to schedule time for you to sharpen the saw right and help help develop those things um, but you can either do it in a way where it just happens and you don't really know where it goes or you can be intentional about how you spend your time and I think that's um, especially during the day hours there's so many great things like office hours um, I think office hours have kind of a negative connotation when you say office hours, you know, it's you go and see office hours if you're struggling. But our professors, again, we have a completely different relationship than most colleges. And we our professors most for the most time, for the most part, you already know your professors. And so a lot of students just swing by office hours to go and chat with their professor or get to know them better or to say like, hey, I would like to walk your dog. I know there's a student right now who uh, <laughs> uh, every day walks Professor Kelly's dog, Luke. So there's all sorts of stuff where you can get to know um, your professor and, and do those things in that space. So um, it's just another extra, I guess, benefit of being at Christendom. All right, so as we move into the evening, again, this is this is a strange experience, but um, there's a lot of social things that happen at Christendom. It's, it's, a, uh, it's kind of a full contact sport when things are going on. I, I'm sure I've given this you know talk to many of you, but a lot of people assume when they hear Christendom is 550 students that nothing is going on and it they're like we're just going to sit around here and look at the night sky and um i guess live in podunk small town virginia but that's not the case at all there's over 100 events each year there's all sorts of things going on every day of the week there's random things happening around campus and i think if a student ever comes to me and says like then says to me there's nothing Thing to do or I'm, I'm feeling bored I think it's a lack of interest and a lack of investment on their own part um, where there's there's always something happening and if there isn't there's always students kind of patching new plans and new things so hopefully we can get you give you a sense of things like that as we move into the nighttime period where there aren't typically classes but there are other things going on so the biggest thing again that I recommend to you is um, and you'll you'll see this from every student that's graduating over and over again 
I ask them over and over again, and I say, you know, what would you go back and shake your younger self by the shoulders? What would you tell them to do? They would say, study more, right? They would say, I, um, I really wish I had done more of the reading. I wish I had done all these things. It, it's this, the assignments as far as homework are always going to be a lot. And that's part of the, the Christendom experience is that we want to be a rigorous educational institution. We want to provide you the opportunity, the opportunity to do this. So in the reading, it's not going to be a lot of textbooks. It's going to be a lot of primary sources. So you're going to be, you know, you're going to be reading the Iliad. You're going to be the, reading the Odyssey. You're going to be reading the book of Marjorie Kemp. You're going to be reading Pilgrim's Progress, all these different books. Um, and they can be hard to read. They can be hard to grapple with. You can't just skim through them. Um, but if you, do, if you set aside the time to actually do the reading, you're going to be much better off. In the same way with papers and tests and presentations, all of these things, if you really focus on spending your time well, um, you, you will spend a lot of your time doing studying. And that's, you can study with people, you, you can get to know yourself a little bit better, but, but um, a lot of it's up to you when it comes to the, the class experience. It's very difficult to, I, I don't know of many students who just go to class and take tests and you know write papers last minute and end up doing well. So if you wanna thrive in the Christmas experience, Think about how you're spending your time. Set aside time to do the studying that's necessary. It may mean you have to like also include little rewards for yourself and build yourself up, but it's a really important part of the Christian experience is that you probably should be setting aside at least uh, two hours for every one hour you spend in class for sitting in that space. So that means that by the time you're looking at just your schoolwork, you're spending more than 40 hours a week on your schoolwork. Um, and that's a lot. But it's I think it's very worthwhile in the end, and especially as you grow in the study. I, I know I know I talked with a Dominican about this. I think when you focus on your vocation as student in that time, you can really look at the desk as your cross. Right. You're mounting up in that space where it's it's a thing of joy and it's a thing that you do out of love. But it's also a, a place where you perfect your work and you learn over time. So, again, I just can't say it enough. It's a big part of the of any college student's experience, but especially at Christian where we take academics very seriously. Um we, we, we're, we're not a place where you can just kind of brush off school and hope that everything's going to be fine. You really need to make it a, a key part of your experience. We also have so many different clubs <laughs> available on campus. Um, again, I, I, I have it right here. Clubs are an essential part of the Christian experience. Um, there are so many different clubs, things like that. We have the Boxing Club. We have uh, the Chester Bellock Debate Society, Shield of Roses, Legion of Mary. I'm just seeing these different things. Sacred Guns Coffee Shop. There's a drawing club. Clubs are being started, it seems, every semester to me. There's different drawing clubs. There's different cinema clubs. A tennis club was started up last year. There's all sorts of different things. And they're great social experiences for you to focus on something that you love and develop it with other people. If you have something that you're really into, we, I know we had a, a student come in two years ago that was super into coding, right? He wanted to do coding. And he got some other guys that were also into coding. And they started a coding club. And now they have their own, they have their own program that they made that automatically uh, helps you write your papers in the format required, which is uh, Turabian format. So you can you can work on these things and you can get funding from the uh, Student Act Activities Council. So if you go to, if you just Google um, Christendom.edu or if you Google Christendom Clubs, you should be able to find it, but there, the link is there if you want to see it. I can send it in the chat later on as well. But there again, there are so many clubs that students do and Different clubs have different levels of meeting. So, for instance, the boxing club, which is pictured, uh, meets three nights a week. And so it's, you know, it's an hour and a half workout. They go do that and then they put on an event at the end of the year. That's fantastic. Other clubs may meet less frequently or <laughs> even more frequently. I know that the chess and shogi club plays every day at lunch, right? <laughs> and, they, and that's if you really love chess and shogi, that's the place to be. Um, so there's all sorts of different things that happen there. In conjunction with that, we also have intramurals. Again, we really want you to be... Um, focused in every way possible on how you, um, how do I say this, on not just how you are uh, developing intellectually, but how you are also developing personally. Um, we really want you to uh, have a, a well-rounded educational approach in all of your work. And so that means we have intramurals that are in, uh, you know, all sorts of different sports throughout the year that we don't, whether you can uh, whether you're the best athlete that we have at Christendom or you can barely pick up a, a ball or, or catch anything, we want you to be playing an intramural. So there's all sorts of different things that happen from ping pong to dodgeball to ultimate frisbee. We want you to sign up. They're free. They happen within this, you know, you sign up with a team and you can play. Most most colleges have something like this, but we really want ours to 
be a place where, again, effort and sport is a matter of character rather than reward. And so we want you to develop your character, not just in the classroom, not just in mass, but even in an athletic space where you can really grow and, and find more out about yourself and, and learn more about how to live a holy life. So there's all sorts of different things. And again, as I mentioned before, it's really easy to found a club. All you have to do is have four other people. So five total people that agree on the same thing. You guys have a little constitution that you say like, this is how we're made up. And you go and you present yourself to the Student Activities Council and say, this is how our constitution fits in with the goal of Christian M. College. And if you get approved by the Student Activities Council, then uh, you can get funding for up to $500 a year. So $250 a semester. Now clubs come and go, right? Students are graduating, things like that. But you know, if you really put your work into it, you could have something that lasts for a good long while. Things like the Chester Bellic Debate Society have been going on for close to 20 years now. So, you know, you never know uh, how much of an impact you could have or how you could change a student's life in that space. So all sorts of things that happen in the evenings. I know, so for instance, Monica is involved a lot with, uh, she does a lot with Swing and Sundays, which is one of our, our biggest clubs. So she goes in and dances in Sunday nights and, um, I'm trying to remember what John Paul is involved with. John Paul this year, he's the head RA. And so he's focused on a lot of putting on events and things like that uh, for his floor. I don't know if he's involved in any clubs because he also does sports. But, you know, it, there's not a, a requirement to do a specific club or not, uh, but they're always there and available for you to do different things. Again, as I mentioned before with John Paul, we have different events and different things like that that happen throughout the year that aren't even... Uh, part necessarily of the uh, a club experience that you could just go to. So for instance, we had our last basketball game a couple weeks ago. And so we had all the, it was a senior night and there's all sorts of things. John Paul Vanderwood, he was honored and it was a, a fantastic experience. There's different talks. We've had people, we've different talks for different feast days. Like for instance, in January around the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, there's uh, a St. Thomas Aquinas lecture where we typically have, uh, you know, a different speaker come and speak about something related to uh, to mystic uh, philosophy or theology. And so there's different uh, departments that come and speak on different things like that. Again, we'll have different clubs put on the events like the boxing club that I mentioned before. Um, this weekend, we have Mystery Dinner Theater, which is a fantastic thing. So it's a um, a fundraiser that is a, a whodunit mystery that is written, directed, and produced all by the senior class. Um, and it's, it's uh, there's different students will come and be actors in it. It's a, it's a hilarious event. So if you're in the area, I highly recommend you come out. Um, it's very, very worthwhile. Student life events, again, the, the, the student activities calendar, if you go to calendar.christen.edu, you can see that. There's different floor events that go on. So John Paul Vanderwoody, again, as a, um, as a, uh, uh, as a head RA, he puts on events for his floor and things like that to build up bonding. I know that uh, Monica, as a junior, uh, with her junior class, they had a Nutella night in the beginning of the year for uh, the returning Romer students so that they could get to know the freshman class. There's all sorts of things happening on, and you can see that on the SAC calendar. It's, it's very worthwhile. Lastly, we get into the weekend space. Um, there's all sorts of things that happen. We were just, we just had last weekend, if you were here, here for the Padre Pio competition, you'll notice that, you know, as we were ending our dinner and things like that, we were preparing for the dance under the stars. There was all sorts of things. We have all sorts of dances and, and social gatherings and things like that. So for instance, there's Dr. Cutterback's barn dance at the beginning of the year, which is always a fantastic experience where I know the freshmen are always a little bit nervous, but they have, uh, they have contra style dancing and it's similar to the summer program. And it's, again, it's a great uh, tradition every year. We have Italian night around the Feast of St. Francis. There's homecoming. I mentioned Dance of the Stars, which is kind of a, a, a honor, honoring the senior dance. We have winter formal in the gym where the students spend a countless hours putting in all these different things to make a beautiful setup for it. Um, spring formal typically happens at, you know, a, a beautiful venue off campus somewhere in the area. Um, there's just, there's all sorts of different things. And again, what we're trying to be at Christendom is that countercultural space. Um, we're trying to have our, want, have students who live differently in everything that we do. And so, especially that comes out, I think, in how we celebrate different. We're still having a fantastic time, but it's, 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 it's in a, a joyful way that isn't necessarily going and being debauched in ways like that. So people still sin, but we're, we're striving to live differently those ways. Also on Saturday mornings, a lot of students do Shield of Roses, which is they, again, a prayerful, prayerful protest, a peaceful protest outside of Planned Parenthood. They drive about an hour away. I think it's in Silver Spring, Maryland these days. And then once a semester, they have something called Mega Shield, where it seems like half of campus goes out. So imagine 250 people descending 
and praying the whole rosary um, out in front of Planned Parenthood. I think it's a really powerful witness for a lot of people in that way. Again, there's all sorts of stuff they do in town. I highly recommend you check out uh, <laughs> um, Catherine LaFromboise's Boys' Life in Front Royal okay. webinar uh, that came out, I think, two weeks ago. It's a worthwhile thing. You can see all the different things. There's tons and tons of things. If you ever want to find out my personal recommendations, ask me on your own. You can you can email me or text me or call me, and I'd be happy to give you my own recommendations. And then, again, as always, I don't want to sound like a, a broken record, but it is important to set aside time for studying, especially... Um, yeah, especially to save it for sat, like to make time for it on Saturday, so that you're not studying on Sunday. Now, I think a lot of students will try to avoid um, studying on Sunday, but a lot of students procrastinate and end up doing stuff Sunday night. So it's always there's the ideal, and then there's the reality of uh, students that wanted to relax on a Saturday instead of Sunday. So it's up to you, and there's nobody forcing you to be restful, but they're trying to live differently. And so uh, I think a lot of students do get their work done on Saturday, so they don't have to do it on Sunday. Moving on to Sundays. Again, we mentioned it's the, Sunday for us is the Dies Domini, right? It's the, it's the Lord's Day. Um, it's, we have a, um, a, a lot of masses offered throughout the week. So there, there's actually, there's more than eight now opportunities to attend Sunday mass uh, since then. But between here uh, at Christendom and at St. John's, and there's the Ukrainian church. There's all sorts of different things. There's no reason why a student shouldn't be going to Sunday mass. There's there's all sorts of opportunities. So if you ever talk to your parents, and you're like, I really can't figure out how I'm not getting to mass. Have them talk to me. We'll make sure that you can at least get to Sunday mass. It's again, we want this place to be the easiest place for you to live out the Christian life, especially to the sacraments. They're they are very present. They are very available. Um, and so we have our main community mass though is at 10 a.m. And we want our students to gather together. And it's, it's always a packed experience, but I think it's, it's a delicious time for our students to uh, get together and worship God as a community. And then we have a delicious brunch after that in St. Lawrence Commons, which is always a worthwhile thing. And then again, we on Sundays, we have uh, Swing and Sundays. So I mentioned that Monica is involved in Swing and Sundays. That typically happens on Sundays. And then also uh, the Chester Book Debate Society, they, off, they alternate on different Sundays. Um, and so typically on, on the Sundays that Swing and Sundays is happening, uh, most students are gonna be out there. And then on the Sunday, it, 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 the events just alternate. So there's a lot of different things to go back and forth. But if you get a chance, I highly recommend coming out and visiting, come in on a Sunday night and you can see uh, all the exciting times. So it's, it's very worthwhile. Lastly, looking ahead for you guys, we're planning on having you all here this fall. Hopefully you get a, you got a sense of a little bit more about what our students do in the day-to-day -day here with these things. Um, our May 1st deadline, uh, we're planning for you to be here this fall. If you have decided that you don't want to come this fall, um, our this May 1st is the last deadline for you to request a deposit refund. Otherwise, you can still drop out after that point. We just can't give you a refund. Um, so I'm happy to keep answering any of your questions. I know a lot of you are looking ahead and going through that. Some of you might still be discerning. So I'm happy to help you uh, go through that period. Um, I know for a number of you on this call, you actually haven't visited campus yet. Um, and so even if you have or, or haven't, we're having our last open house on April 27th. We'd love to see you there. Um, it's an open house, again, is a great way to get a quick view of what Christian is about. <laughs> um, you can ask, uh, I feel like you could ask the Deichmans who are on this call. They have, they're the open house experts. Uh, but there, no, there's, there's all sorts of different people that um, can that will be able to, I think, that have not been to campus yet here on this list. So I really encourage you guys to come visit on April 27th, so you can come get a sense of what Christmas is about. If you've already visited, we'd love to have you again, even if you know if you're if you're interested in coming out. Uh, but either way, um, April 27th is that last open house. And again, with all this, we want to make the process, the transition from uh, high school to college, an easy one for you. It's my job. I've helped you know, hundreds of students through this process. And so whether it's me or whether it's Catherine LeFron Boyce or whether it's my boss, Sam Phillips or Basha or Aaron Ginter, we are all happy to help you and want to help you out. So if you ever have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I have my uh, desk and text there for you guys as well as my email. So yeah, please reach out. I'm going to answer these questions and then I will send you all on your merry way. Um, is mass in English or Latin? And what is Turabian format for papers? Those are the two questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to put them in. So um, Lily, you asked a question, if, is mass in English or in Latin? Um, 
the answer is both, um, if that makes sense. So for the most part, uh, because of the limitations of the latest Voto Proprio, um, we uh, don't offer any extraordinary form on campus. Um, we have it less than a mile down the road. It's it's a fantastic opportunity. A lot of students do offer it, like do go to the extraordinary form there. Um, in our Novus Ordo masses though, um, we have both, we typically go on Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, mass is in uh, Novus Ordo in English. Um, and then in on Sundays, what is that? Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, um, Mass is a Novus Ordo in Latin. And so it's, again, we want our students to know and come to love the experience of the, the love song and the love language of the church. And so that's that's why we have our, we want our students to be well-versed in Latin. And I know it can be a little bit awkward and a little bit of an adjustment when you first get here. It certainly was for me, but it's something that as you spend time with it, it's something that's so beautiful and so worthwhile. It helps you just, I think, learn again to have that Romans 12 two mindset that you're not conformed to the ways of this world, but you're transformed by the renewal of your minds. And especially in studying and, and kind of learning to think and pray in Latin, it's, it's, a, it's a very helpful experience. Um, Mr. Deitchman asks, what is Trabian format for papers? So it's, a, it's the manual for writers of research papers. I think we're on the ninth edition now, or maybe the eighth. I can't remember. Um, it, you'll you'll get the you'll get the sheet in in time. We'll we'll send out a list of of books that we recommend you buy for the fall semester. You can if you really want to get ahead of things. But the author's name is Kate L. Turabian, and so we just just referred to in in shorthand as Turabian format. Um, so that's it's different than MLA if you're used to the Modern Language Association, um, but it's. It's fine. We, we we will we will get you on board. MLA is typically for high school students, and then Trabian format is typically for college students. So we'll help. We'll be there to help you every step of the way. All right. Okay. If that's all the questions, again, we can't wait to have you here this fall. I know there's all sorts of chaotic things and excitement. Don't forget to enjoy the rest of your senior year right now. There's so many good things that are happening right now. So don't be so focused on getting to college that you forget all the good things that are happening right now. Hold on to your parents, you know, hug them tightly, be thankful for them. There's so many great things to be thankful to God for right now. Um, let's offer that up to, up to God in prayer right now. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you guys. Have a great day. If that is everything, I will see you all uh, next uh, on the 23rd with when I interview our student activities director, Marilyn Charba, about events and stuff happening on campus. So you can learn more about that. All right. Have a great day. I will see you all soon. God bless.